Dolphins fans, we are live here on Dolphins today for the first time ever. Appreciate you all joining us. We have a lot to discuss later on in the show. We're going to talk about some joint practice news that went down in Tampa Bay. We're going to recap the two joint practices that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had with the Miami Dolphins. Then we're going to preview the first preseason game on Saturday. That also against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But the breaking news this hour has nothing to do with the joint practices we saw the last two days in Tampa Bay. It has everything to do with Adam Shaheen. The trade has fallen through. We talked about on Tuesday that tight end Adam Shaheen was being shipped to the Houston Texans for a six-round pick. However, that trade has fallen through this breaking Moments ago, Ian Rappaport has confirmed it. Cameron Wolf of NFL Network has confirmed it. And I want to hear from you in a second. Air Ari Mirov actually was the first to report it. The Texans and the Dolphins trade involving tight end Adam Shaheen fell through after Houston failed the physical. Uh, Adam Shaheen failed his physical in Houston. He is now back with the Miami Dolphins, that coming from Ari Mirov. And then Chip Corley, a subscriber here on Dolphins Today, said, hey, well, Texans saw your video roasting them and that, and then hit Shaheen's leg with the crowbar. So, hey, maybe that happened because I was, I was roasting the Texans a lot in that video the other night for giving us anything for Adam Shaheen because Shaheen was the fifth tight end on the depth chart. What is your one-word reaction to this trade falling through, go down in the comments section and let me know because I want to hear from you. We're going to give some shout-outs here to Ball Kane saying, is he worth anything after this, after he failed the physical? We got Sebastian saying, I am mad about the Shaheen trade falling through. We got its critics saying, eh, oh, well. Let's see, Ninja Alex saying, sad is my one-word reaction to this trade. Pokey Grinja 39, a very loyal subscriber, saying he must feel pissed after he sees the Dolphins again. I agree, and we're going to talk about that again in a few minutes after we let the audience start start rolling in here. Almost 200 people watching. We just went live three minutes ago, so we, uh, we appreciate y'all. Like the video. If you're watching, like the video. That's a great way for us to grow our audience here at Chat Sports. Go down Hit that thumbs up icon. It's critics saying, let's get rid of Shaheen and also Preston Williams. And it's going to be very interesting to see the next trade that goes down. Could it be Preston Williams? Scott is saying, just cut him. I tend to agree. I mean, is he worth anything at this point? I don't know if you're going to be able to trade Adam Shaheen after this again. He just failed a physical. I mean, how rare is this? When do we see this in the National Football League? We're going to talk about Shaheen in a second. I want to know, where are you watching from? Shout out your city here on Dolphins today. I'm going to give some shout outs here as we continue to let the audience roll in. Over 200 people watching our first live show here on Dolphins Today. We got David in Miami. It's critics saying New York, sadly. Hating on New York, man. We got to get you down to Miami. Purple Poison. Watching from my hometown of Houston, Texas. H-Town. Still tipping. Let's roll. We got Derek watching from Miami. Quentin is in New Mexico. Troy, Fort Lauderdale. We got Kaylee in Southwest Virginia. Milton is in Las Vegas. We got James in Wichita, Kansas. Gregory is in Jacksonville. Poke Greenwich at 39 is in Fort Lauderdale. We got Diego in Sacramento, California. We got Brady north of the border, British Columbia. Blackbeard Gaming is watching in Finland. We got an international audience here on Dolphins today. Finns Nation is global. Chip Corley saying thanks for the shout out. West Palm Beach is where my guy Chip is watching from. Let's talk about this game on Saturday now. I want to know who y'all got. And I understand it's just a preseason game, but I'm still excited. I hope you're excited. We're going to be having a watch party here on Chat Sports Dolphins today. Turn on your notifications. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Let me know who you got. Derek is saying Miami is going to beat Tampa Bay. Zach is saying Miami is going to beat Ter uh, Tampa Bay. Derek also rolling with the fans. Antoine rolling with the fans. I don't see any Bucks fans here in the chat, 
which is probably a good thing. Two Ball Kane is saying, no, Brady. We got the Miami Dolphins is who he is taking. Kaylee is also taking Miami Purple Poison, rolling with the Fins. But are you rolling with Oreos or are you rolling with cheese? It's kind of a fun question here as the audience continues to come in. Oreos are my favorite snacks. Cheese it probably a close second. I want to hear from you what's the better snack. Zach is saying cheese it's All right, Zach, I can respect that. I'm an Oreos guy. Kaylee, all about the Oreos. Poke Greenwich is saying Miami beats the Bucks, and I'm going with cheese it's as we bring in producer Trace Gerard. Trace, cheers to you, my friend. You know, I cheers. wasn't planning on drinking today, but after the Shaheen trade goes down, we might have to get – a little bit buzz, man. I mean, this is wild, this news. But are you going with Oreos or are you going with Cheez-Its? Well, first of all, I'm going to have to take the hot take of Cheez-Its. I love right, Cheez-Its. Right. They are the, you know, supreme cheese cracker, I would say. But I do want to do a quick reminder because, I mean, this is what our first Dolphins yes, Live show in first forever. first Dolphins Live. What we like to do is have a little fun. So we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and start things off correct. <laughs> Let's go. If you guys send in super chats, we'll have a mailbag later. We'll answer your question, we'll take some shots, we'll have some fun. So let's keep it rolling. Cheers, my friends. Cheers. And if you super chat, you can skip the line when the mailbag comes. You do not have to wait. You are guaranteed to get on the show if you super chat. So be sure to do that as we're moments away from getting this show rolling here. If you want to get on the show again, use hashtag Dolphins or Super Chat. You got to use hashtag Dolphins because that way producer Trace Gerard can pull your questions or you can Super Chat, skip the line, get on the show. We'll take a drink for you. Before we get into the show, I want to know, who are you most excited to watch? Is it Skylar Thompson, Eric Ezukaima, Channing Tindall? Top three rookies to watch, in my opinion, on Saturday. Who you got? Skylar Thompson, Easy E, Eric Ezukanma, or Channing Tindall. We got Jeremy, uh, we got Paul, excuse me, saying Easy E. Antoine also rolling with Easy E. We got Scott saying Channing Tindall. Derek saying Eric Ezukanma, Purple Poison, all about Ezukanma as well. Easy E, as we like to call him here on Dolphins Today, has looked fantastic in training camp, looked very good the last two days. Derek also saying Easy E, as well as Terry going with. Eric Ezukanma. Here's what's coming up on Dolphins Live. May I remind you, the first Dolphins Live show you are witnessing history here on Chat Sports. We're going to begin with a joint practice recap. What went down the last two days in Tampa Bay? We're going to get into a mailbag, then we're going to preview Saturday's first preseason game in Tampa Bay. I am Will Scott. Welcome into Dolphins today. We have some breaking news. The trade that was going to send Dolphins tight end Adam Shaheen to the Houston Texans has fallen through. The trade is off due to a failed physical. I'm going to get into my thoughts on this in a second, but first, subscribe because we're in a sub battle with my guy Tyler Jones and Seahawks today. When we started this sub battle, we were about 3,500 subscribers down. Now it's just under 100, uh, excuse me, 1,000 subscribers down. So we're trying to catch Seahawks today. Go down, hit that big red subscribe button. Ari Mirov was the first to report the news about Shaheen. The Texans Dolphins trade involving tight end Adam Shaheen fell through after Houston failed Shaheen on his physical. He's back with the Dolphins. Here is what that trade looked like as we're continuing as we are live, to have more information roll in about this trade being canceled. So the Dolphins were going to get a sixth-round pick. Texans were going to get Shaheen in a seventh-round pick. This was a great trade for the Dolphins because Shaheen was not even going to make the roster. He was listed as the fifth tight end on the first unofficial depth chart, but now he is back with the Dolphins, and the Dolphins are not going to get that sixth-round pick. So it was a great trade. They basically swapped a seventh-round pick for a sixth-round pick. They previously did not have a sixth-round pick in next year's draft, and now they still don't have one. Cut this man immediately. I mean, you got to cut him. He's First of all, he's not going to make the team. He has zero trade value now after he just failed his physical, and we are learning this moments ago from Cameron Wolf of NFL Network reporting that tight end Adam Shaheen was given a failed physical designation by the Texans, which means the trade is off. 
he will return to the Dolphins. Here, here's the interesting thing about this. He was flagged for a pre-existing knee condition. He hadn't missed any time. So it is a knee injury for Shaheen. We do not know the severity of it, but it was bad enough that he failed his physical. I think the Dolphins have to move on, shed some salary cap, and cut this guy now because it might get awkward. I mean, think about this for a second. You trade this guy to the Texans. He's on a flight to Houston. He lands in Houston today for his physical. Now he has to come back to the team that tried to trade him, that tried to get rid of him, get rid of the awkwardness, just cut him, move on. He's not going to make the team. The team believes in Hunter Long. They believe in Seath and Carter, I think, more than they do in Shaheen at this point. Get rid of Adam Shaheen. It's going to get awkward. There's no need for him on this football team. He's not even very good. He's a good run. He's a good blocker, but I'm not really a big fan of uh, him as a weapon. What is your one-word reaction to the Shaheen trade falling through? It is the pinned comment on today's video. Go and reply to it when you get a sec. Breaking news this hour on Dolphins Today. Let's get into this joint practice recap now. A lot of storylines emerging from the last two days in Tampa Bay. The Dolphins looked very, very good against one of the best teams in the National Football League, but Connor Williams did not look good. It was a brutal day today for Connor Williams. I mean, I was on my phone checking Twitter. Every, every other tweet, it felt like, was about Williams' snapping problems. This coming from Omar Kelly. High snap from Connor Williams. Throws to the throw to Wiles broken up. Here is the next tweet from Omar Kelly. High snap. Tua throws a completion to Gasicki for a respectable game. Tua has to jump. He had to jump for the Connor Williams snap. This is King of Finland, my guy, supporter of the show. By my count, he was at practice, by the way, today. Connor Williams has had at least four notably high or low snaps in the 11 on 11 periods. That, that came before 10 15. This is all going down like the first hour of practice. Omar Kelly again. Bad snap. Tua is on the ground. Play is dead. He claps his hands in frustration. I'd be frustrated too if I'm Tua when my center cannot snap me the football. Here's what I would say. In the experiment. End it. The experiment has failed. It failed last preseason with the Dallas Cowboys. It is failing Right now in Miami, it is time, Chris Greer. It is time, this coaching staff. It is time, this front office, to stop being foolish and take the center position seriously. Michael Dieter's back, which is a good thing, but you have to go out and sign a capable center. You do not have one in Connor Williams. He cannot snap the football. He's blocked well in camp. And look, I'm rooting for the guy. He's, he's sh clearly showing good work ethic. After practice today, he stayed after practice with Tua to work on snaps. But the guy's not a center. He's a guard. It's time to end the experiment and sign a center. Maybe sign one of these three guys because you brought these guys in for workouts last week. Jake Lucina, Cole Cabral, and Cole Toner all worked out for the team. Toner has some NFL experience. Cabral has spent some time on the practice squad. And then, uh, yeah, he spent last season on the Saints practice squad. And then Jake Lucina was the best center in the USFL. I think that the Dolphins have to sign a center. Maybe Jake Lucina, maybe J.C. Treader. So I want y'all to go down in the comments section right now and spam hashtag J.C. to Miami and hashtag Lucina to Miami. Let's show the Miami Dolphins that we want them to sign a capable center. Hashtag J.C. to Miami, hashtag Lucina to Miami. Go and spam it down in the comment section. The good news when regarding the center position is that Michael Dieter is back. I know most of us are not fans of him, but he's a big upgrade over Williams, so I'm happy he's back at practice. Daniel Lowy Fussy of the Miami Herald confirmed it yesterday. This tweet was yesterday. Dolphins offensive lineman Michael Dieter is back at practice after missing the last week with a foot injury, so that is certainly good news on that front. However, we heard from Omar Kelly today that we really haven't seen Michael Dieter yet. So I don't think that's uh, anything to be concerned about. I just think they're slowly working him back because he he suffered that foot injury. He has a history with foot injuries. They're slowly working him back. And because he's back, that's probably why the team did not sign one of those three centers that they worked out. But if he has, if he has another setback, I would not be shocked to see the team bring in a center. Probably not J.C. Treader but maybe a Jake Lucina, maybe a Cole Toner. Again, they worked out Lucina, 
Cole Toner and Cole Cabral last Sunday in Miami. They did not sign any of those three guys. Aaron Wilson said that there was no immediate signing after. There was not expected to be a signing. I think it was more of them taking a look at one of those three guys in case Dieter is not good to go by the start of the regular season. Luckily, he's back. We did hear from Omar Kelly that he uh, might miss the entire preseason, but he was back at practice yesterday. Now, if you had to pick a center, pick Connor Williams or pick Michael Dieter. Type CW for Williams or type MD for Dieter down in the comments section. Go down and let me know. I, I'd be so relieved if it's Dieter because at least Dieter has some experience. Williams does not have any experience. He does not look good snapping the football. And this is what the offensive line depth chart would look like with Dieter. You have Dieter as a center. You move Williams back to left guard. This offensive line looks much, much better than it does currently with Williams as the center and Eichenberg as the left guard. Another takeaway that we have coming from Tampa is that Tom Brady was nowhere to be found. Where was Tom Brady today at practice? Ian Rappaport said this, Bucks QB Tom Brady is not at practice today for personal non-football reasons. Coach Todd Bowles will discuss it after practice, but my understanding is he won't be present for a few days. Then Ben Volan, who covers the Bucs, said this. Bucks coach Todd Bowles said Tom Brady won't be back with the Bucs until after the Titans preseason game on August 20th, taking a week and a half off. Ben Volan said this as well. Bowles said his confidence is pretty high that Brady will be the Bucs QB in week one, but that's noticeably not a guarantee from Bowles. Now, we don't know what's going on with Brady. Personal issues, it could be a family matter. We certainly hope everything is okay. Like, I say that wholeheartedly. Like, hopefully everything is okay with Brady. Hopefully nothing is going on that's alarming regarding family. Hopefully everyone's healthy. But this comes a day after the Dolphins' defense dominated Tom Brady. Did the Dolphins force Tom Brady back into retirement? I don't know. The timing on this is very interesting. Dolphins dominate Tom Brady in camp. The next day, Brady's nowhere to be found. He might not be back for another two weeks. Just saying. By the way, you can go bet on BetUS, promo code DOLPHINS125, and you can get a 125% deposit bonus. It's the best way to bet on Saturday's game. The Dolphins are a one-point favorite. Tom Brady will not be playing in the game. Tua Tungavailoa likely not playing as well. Buccaneers uh, and Dolphins, the total is at 31. You can go bet, promo code DOLPHINS125, chatsports.com slash bet. Let's talk about the defense because the defense played very well the last two days, especially yesterday. The defense really stepped up against one of the best offenses in the National Football League, led by Tom Brady. Here's what the Miami Herald said. On the two-minute drill for the Dolphins' defense, Buccaneers quarterback Tom Brady unofficially completed five of eight passes. Four of the passes were short, but he completed a long pass along the sideline with quarterback Noah Igbenogany in coverage. The completion set up a made field goal for Tampa. Defensive end Emmanuel Logba battled a Brady pass and registered a sack on the drive. Omar Kelly said this, Tampa Bay just got called for an offensive pass interference. Brady's frustration level seems to be growing. Dolphins blitzes seem to be bothering the Bucs. Tom Brady was frustrated yesterday at practice. He was not happy with the way practice was going. The Dolphins' defensive line, Emmanuel Logba, Raekwon Davis, both looked very, very good against the GOAT, and then Brady does not come to practice the next day. Very interesting. Based on the way that Todd Bowles said it, it sounded like it was like a predetermined thing, like Brady's like, okay, I'll come out of retirement, but you got to let me go on vacation <laughs> in the middle of the preseason. I don't know. He's Tom Brady. He can do whatever he wants. Do the Dolphins have a top-five defense? Type Y for yes or type N for no down in the comments section. I think eventually this season they're going to prove they're one of the best defenses in the National Football League. Maybe aside from Noah Igbenogany because Igbo got burned, man. It was bad. It was really, really bad the last two days going up against some very talented Tampa Bay wide receivers. He got torched yesterday by the Bucks offense. He got torched again today by Tampa Bay. So, you know, it's frustrating because Igbo has a lot of potential. He's, you know, first-round pick. And he looked good in minicamp and in the OTA period, but he has not looked good in training camp. This is what Dobbs said. Dolphins drafted cornerback Noah Igbenogany in the first round of the 2020 draft, but he has struggled mightily so far in his career. Doesn't appear year three will be much different. The Pucks' top wide receivers mispracticed 
But even undersized, undrafted rookies such as Devin Tompkins torched him. He's getting he's getting torched by undrafted rookies. It's a problem. Do you have any faith in Noah Igbenogany at this point? Type 1 for yes or type 0 for no down in the comments section. Go down, chime in. Some good news. Tua looks outstanding, and Tua continues to prove the haters wrong. It's unbelievable, though. He had one bad pass yesterday, and it went viral on Twitter because, of course, Josina Anderson said this. She was uh, formerly BSPN, now works for CBS. Tua is absolutely slinging it out here. Dolphins offense is firing on all cylinders in this period. You love to see it. King of Finland, my guy, was at this practice. The Dolphins offense just dominated a top five defense for 90 minutes. This coming from Omar Kelly. Tua is throwing two spots. Just watched a Bucks defender swear he was getting an INT right up until said Wilson runs the spot and snatch it. So that's what we're hearing from Tyreek, right, too, that he is the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. He is able to put it into spots that only his receivers can get to. He looked outstanding. So did another quarterback, Skylar Thompson. Skylar Thompson has looked outstanding the entire preseason. I've been looking uh, I've been looking like a fool because I gave this grade an F, and Skylar Thompson threw at least five touchdown passes today against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He balled out. He was a man on a mission at this joint practice today. I'm really excited to watch Skyler on Saturday. He's going to get a lot of playing time, especially if Tua Tungavailoa doesn't suit up. Another thing we saw at this joint practice was intensity, and that's what you're going to see at these joint practices. Guys getting into it. We saw that earlier today. Danny Loi Fussy was there. He said, training camp fracas. Duke Riley and Luke Gadecki got into it a couple plays in a row. After a short Bucks run, the two locked onto each other in the end zone and had to be separated. Nothing too crazy, but definitely more intensity on day two. Nothing out of the nothing unusual. We normally see these joint practices get a little bit intense, get a little bit, you know, like this. So it's not a surprise, but it's going to be fun to watch those two teams back at it on Saturday night. Again, we'll have a watch party for that game. So be sure to tune in for that and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already because we're breaking down Dolphins news, Dolphins rumors every single day. With that, we bring in Trace Gerard back onto the show. Producer Trace Gerard. Now, there's some rumors out there that Kareem Hunt's going to be on the move. He requested a trade. I know your Saints are interested in him. But if you're the Dolphins, does that make sense? I just don't think so. Still, Sorry, I thought I was still muted. <laughs> no, My bad. Good, I hit the wrong button. You're good. Um, see, I think it wouldn't make sense for the Dolphins because, as we know, they have a very loaded depth chart. I mean, with yep. Chase Edmonds, Sony Michelle, Raheem Moster. I mean, you guys stole a few guys that I wanted personally, but, you know, it happens. So, I mean, I think that the Dolphins have a – a big challenge in terms of who they need to cut um, before, you know, to get down to the final 53-man roster. So this preseason is going to be huge uh, for the for the Dolphins. So I don't think a Kareem Hunt trade makes sense, but I think that if anyone were to pull it off, it would be them. Yeah, I think that when you look at this, it would have made sense earlier in the offseason before they signed three running backs because you brought in three new running backs, Sony Michelle, Raheem Mostert, Chase Edmonds. I just don't think Kareem makes sense in – in terms of what you're looking at in this Dolphins depth chart. But my goodness, would that be fun? <laughs> Kareem Hunt running around in Mike McDaniel's offense. Who's going to have the more Who's gonna have more receiving? Oh, we have a super chat coming in. Got a couple super chats. We're going to shout you out. Again, if you super chat, you get to skip the line. Jeremy Chugs coming in. Hashtag JC to Miami. Hashtag Lacina to Miami. Get it done. Chris Greer, you love to see it. I'm going to take a drink for you, Chugs. Chugs again, Willie Fins. Who are some Dolphins who could get traded? Also, Andy Waddle the way, da 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 da, till the very next play. Ba 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 da ba. That's the Waddle song written by my guy Jeremy Chugs. Preston Williams will get traded. That is going to happen. Preston Williams is going to get traded. The question is when. Adam Shaheen got traded, but now he's back in Miami. Talk about awkward. Uh, but Preston Williams, Chugs, I think, will get traded. Also, keep an eye on Miles Miles Gaskin. Kevin Fisher, my guy, says over under 25 pressures for Sealer. Over, man. It's going to be a huge year for Zach Sealer, the most underrated player on the Dolphins, one of the most underrated players 
in the National Football League. I want to hear from our subscribers now. More receiving yards, Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle, type TH for Cheetah or type JW for the Penguin, is we will get some shout outs. We got Ninja Alex. Appreciate you watching the show. John Ruiz is in the building. You love to see it. We got Vio saying Tyree Kill. Mario saying Jalen Waddle, the two fastest receivers in the league on the same team. Garth saying Tyree Kill. Poke Greninja saying, woo, let's go, Poke Greninja. We got Diego saying Tyree Kill. Cameron Reed saying Tyree Kill. John Ruiz saying JC to Miami. You love to see it. Let's make that happen. You know, Connor Williams continues to have massive snapping issues. JC, you might have to get him on the phone. Ezekiel saying Tyree Kill as well. Going to be a lot of fun to watch those two guys in the preseason. Use hashtag Dolphins or Super Chat to get on the show. We're about to get into our mailbag. If you want to ask a question, you have to use hashtag Dolphins. That allows producer Trace to see your comment. Use hashtag Dolphins. Or if you want to skip the line, Use uh, use the Super Chat icon to skip the line. Send us some moolah. We'll get you on the show ASAP. You can skip the line and get you on the show. We'll take a drink for you, too, if you send in a Super Chat. Welcome into this edition of the Miami Dolphins Mailbag. I am Will Scott answering questions from our loyal subscribers here at Chat Sports as we are winding it down. First preseason game coming up Saturday night in Tampa Bay. We begin with Kevin Fisher, one of our most loyal subscribers here on Dolphins Day. Appreciate you, Kev. Over under 25 pressures for Sealer. Over. I'm hitting the over there. I don't know if that's an official line or just the line that you, you're you doing, Kevin, but 100% over for Sealer. He is going to have a big year. Again, one of the most underrated players in the National Football League. Antoine, my guy, says, if Tua fails this year, would the Dolphins trade him away, and if so, to who? Yeah, I mean, this is a make-or-break year for Tua. Even a big Tua fan like me is going to admit that Tua's got to step up this year, or the Dolphins might look to move away from him. Now, what's interesting is the Dolphins probably would have used that first-round pick that they just lost to trade for a big-name quarterback. Well, you can't do that anymore. You still have some draft capital, but just not as much. Teams that might be interested in Tua? Uh, I mean, uh, Tom Brady's probably going to have his last year in Tampa Bay this year, so maybe a Tua for Brady swap? Eh, don't hate me. Don't, don't unsubscribe. I don't know what's going to happen there, but uh, Tua's got to step it up this year. If Tua does not play well this year, I don't think any team's going to be interested in trading for him to be the starting quarterback. But again, I think Tua's going to have a big year, prove a lot of people wrong. Tua Truther says, should the Finns trade for Kareem Hunt? No, it would be fun, but they should not do it. And when you look at this current running back depth chart, they do not need Kareem Hunt. I think we all feel very, very good about this current running back situation, which is why I'm going to pass on a Kareem Hunt trade. You have Chase Edmonds, you have Sony Michelle, you have Raheem Mostert. I feel very, very good about this current situation. So no, I'm not going to trade for Kareem Hunt. I will say if they do trade for Hunt, Miles Gaskin would probably go be going to the Cleveland Browns would become their third running back behind Johnson and Chubb. But yeah, I don't see the Dolphins trading for Kareem Hunt at this point, but also haven't seen them making a lot of the moves they made. I mean, who saw the Muhammad's new signing coming? Do you want to trade for Kareem Hunt? Type T for trade or type P for pass down in the comment section. It is the pinned comment on today's video. Go down and reply to it when you get a sec. Two Ball Kane says... Will the new emphasis on illegal contact be a massive help to Miami getting first downs with these fast receivers? Yeah, potentially. I mean, Miami has the two fastest receivers in the game on the same team, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell. We heard, uh, I believe, uh, one of the Tampa Bay Bucks players yesterday talking about that Miami has something that no other team has. You know, Waddell and Hill are going to be explosive, dynamic duo. So, yeah, potentially with the new illegal contact, that could be uh, that could be you know beneficial to this Miami offense. Bokeh Grinch at 39. What do you think we are getting for Preston and Gaskin? That is a great question. If you trade just both of those guys straight up for a pick, Preston is probably worth a fifth. Gaskin is probably worth a seventh. I don't really see them getting much more than that. But you could include one of those guys in a trade for a much better player like a Tevin Jenkins, like a Roquan, and maybe do Preston in a second for Roquan. 
that's very possible. I don't know the likelihood of both of those guys being in the same deal, but you don't need them, and you can use them as kind of trade bait. Batman, my guy, favorite superhero. What will determine whether Tua is a franchise quarterback? Wins and losses. If this Dolphins team makes the playoffs this year, Tua, I think, will have proven himself as a franchise quarterback. Because when you look at the schedule, it is not an easy schedule. You begin the season against the New England Patriots at home, luckily, then Baltimore, then Buffalo, then Cincinnati. That's a brutal start. If this team makes the playoffs and have and has a decent record, then two is going to play well. I think that's a guarantee. So, look, if the Dolphins make the playoffs, I think two is going to be back as the quarterback and maybe solidify himself as the franchise quarterback. But I'd like to see him air it out a little bit more this year. I really would. Kevin Fisher says, do the Finns make a run at Lamar if Tua underperforms? Man, yeah, probably. I think that makes a lot of sense. It's going to be a little bit tougher to get Lamar now that they don't have the draft capital. Uh, but Lamar still hasn't signed his extension. And Lamar is a Florida guy. As we know, his interest level in coming to Miami would probably be pretty high if Tua underperforms. But ultimately, I think Baltimore extends Lamar Jackson. And ultimately, I think I'm going to be on BetUS betting on the Dolphins to win on Saturday night. You can do the same if you use promo code DOLPHINS125. you got to go to chatsports.com slash bet to receive a 125% deposit bonus. That means if you put $100 in, you will get $125 additional dollars to bet with. Great deal we're giving you. Go and take advantage of it. Chatsports.com slash bet. Again, chatsports.com slash bet. Big time Waddle. Waddle season number 17. You love to see it. Who is going to be the Dolphins Rookie of the Year? Great question. I think there's two names that we look at there. Channing Tindall or Eric Ezukanma? I'm going with Easy e Eric Ezukanma is who I think is going to be the Dolphins Rookie of the Year. He is impressed in training camp thus far and is leading the competition to be the fourth wide receiver on this football team. He is, I think really proven a lot a lot of us wrong I think a lot of us weren't a big fan of that pick would have rather had an offensive lineman but he has looked excellent in training camp he's impressed in the joint practices as well easy e is going to be my Dolphins rookie of the year who will be the Dolphins rookie of the year go down in the comments section and let me know it is the pinned comment on today's video go and reply to it who'll be the Dolphins rookie of the year Sebastian Chirino says do you think we're going to go to the Super Bowl this year? Man, I hope so, Sebastian. If the Dolphins make the Super Bowl, we're going to be laughing at so many people. The ones that criticize Tua. The ones that are criticizing Mike McDaniel, saying that he's just a meme and cannot be a good NFL head coach. We're going to have so much fun here on Dolphins today. Uh, can you imagine a Super Bowl watch party on Dolphins today? Uh, to answer your question, no. I think the Dolphins make the playoffs and perhaps make a run, and we saw last year with the Bengals. If you're in the dance, you can make it to the big dance, which is the Super Bowl, but I don't think the Dolphins are going to make it that far. However, maybe AFC Championship game, I wouldn't be shocked if they made it to that. Ed says, what's up, Will? Appreciate you, Ed. What free agent cornerback can be signed to replace Noah Igbenogany? You're giving up on Noah already, Ed? Man, what free agent corner? Man, so many of them... Uh, or off the board at this point. Uh, you have any in mind, Producer Trace? I don't know. That's well, tough. I, I know that you could at least try and trade for Jesse Bates, maybe. Not necessarily get him well, in free agency. A he's a safety. Yeah, yeah, he is more of a safety, so that's kind of a tough one. I don't know. There's not very many appealing cornerbacks still available, if you ask I me. I mean, when you're looking up and down this list, there's plenty of uh, very talented offensive linemen. Chris Harris is still out there and available, so that's an option. You have, oh, Xavier Rhodes? Yeah, I would say Xavier Rhodes would be my number one target if you feel like you need a free agent corner. But I don't think the Dolphins need to do that. You have Trill Williams, who is on the roster bubble. I feel really good about him. And then Cater Kohu, an undrafted free agent out of Texas A&M Commerce. He has looked very good as well. I don't think you need an external option to replace no Igbenogany if you move on from Igbo. Will Sherwood Lett says, in a trade for Roquan's in a trade for Roquan Smith possible? Uh, yes, I think it is. I think the Dolphins are going to be one of the teams linked here. He requested a trade 
from the Chicago Bears on Tuesday. Is a trade possible to Miami? Here's what Jeremy Fowler of ESPN said. He listed Miami as one of 10 possible destinations. Miami comes up in conversation because the Dolphins were believed to be high on Smith in the pre-draft process in 2018. They aren't afraid of the big trade. See, Tyreek Hill. They have $19.5 million in cap space. They are locked, They are lacking a marquee guy in the middle of the defense to complement their cornerstone pieces elsewhere. Then again, Miami is suddenly short on draft capital after the league stripped the team of a first-round pick last week. That coming from ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. I think the Dolphins will be in the mix here. I do, because when you look at where Roquan's going to go, I think he's going to want to go to a contender. I don't think he's going to want to go to a team like Chicago. You know, he's going to want to go uh, to a team. That's why he wants out of Chicago, probably, is because, number one, they won't pay him. Number two, they just suck. So I think Roquan is going to want to go to a much better football team. Miami makes some sense. They were very high on him in the pre-draft process. He was uh, drafted number eight overall. The Dolphins took Minka Fitzpatrick. I know. Number 11 overall. I can't believe they didn't keep Minka. Dolphins receive Roquan Smith in my trade idea. Bears receive Preston Williams and a second round pick next year. I think that is a very possible trade because the Bears need some help at wide receiver. Preston wants out. Trade ID number two, and this is crazy, but it would be amazing. Dolphins receive Roquan Smith and Tevin Jenkins. Bears receive Preston Williams, Austin Jackson, a second-round pick in 2023, and a sixth-round pick in 2024. Let me know what Roquan trade idea you like the most. Is it the number one trade idea, or is it number two? Go down in the comments and let me know. Lay Sports Center Top 10 says Dolphins over under 30 touchdowns for Tua. 30 total touchdowns? I'm going to say over. I'm going to say over. I think he has a couple rushing touchdowns. I think he has 24, 25 passing touchdowns. I'm going to say over. He's got to stay healthy. They got to improve the offensive line a little bit, but I'm going to say over 30 touchdowns for Tua Tungavailoa. Mike says if Skyler keeps playing great in the regular season, Maybe he can get us back that third rounder, Ross Flip Force. <laughs> Zeesh. Maybe. I mean, if Skyler plays well, I don't know if I'd want to uh, trade him. I think I'd want to keep him as the long term backup quarterback. But, man, he has looked outstanding. I think he's exceeded everybody's expectations. And we're going to learn a lot about him on Saturday if he plays well against Tampa Bay. Quinton. Willie Fins to be the owner. Let's go. Let's make that ha let's make that happen. Hashtag Willie Fins to Miami. Let's make it happen. Stephen Ross, sell me the team. I can give you this course light to buy the Miami Dolphins. Let me know if that's a deal. Now, before we head out, do you want to trade for Kareem Hunt? I want to hear this again. Type T for trade or type P for pass. It is the pinned comment. Go and reply to it. Type T or type P. As we... Bring back producer Trace Gerard. We can give some shout outs here. We got Zimbotic saying Willie Fins. Batman saying Willie Fins. We have nearly 400 people watching live. First live show on Dolphins today. We got Zach Turk saying he does not want to trade for Kareem Hunt. Scott saying no Kareem. I agree with everybody that is saying P here. But my goodness, if this trade happens, we might have to throw a party on Dolphins today because it would be a lot of fun to see that trade go down. As we will, this is my favorite, this is my favorite comment driver today. So we were talking about this in the office today. There's betting odds for Kim Kardashian's next boyfriend. Is she going to go back to Kanye? Is she going to go back to Pete Davidson? Is she going to date Van Jones of CNN? Or is she going to date... Chat Sports Zone, Tyler Jones is the summer of Jones rolling to Kim Kardashian. Type T for Tyler Jones because, let's be honest, Tyler Jones likes people in the Kim Kardashian age range. Tyler Jones, type T. Let me know down in the comments section. We got Grossi saying that I'm going to be Kim Kardashian's next boyfriend. Man, I don't know. That would be uh, that'd be interesting. We got we got Dolphin saying Tyler. We got we got a lot of people in the chat saying Tyler. Are you saying Tyler too, Trace? 
I'm either spamming my T for Tyler or my K for Kanye. I mean, I think it's coming back to Kanye or, you know, like we said, hashtag Summer of Jones is going to the Kardashian house. We got Brady saying Tyler. We got Bill Lyon in the chat saying Willie Fins. It's Willie B from the Q's. Appreciate you, Bill Lyon. John Ruiz saying Tyler. Man, Tyler Jones is rolling up the betting odds to be Kim Kardashian's Next, boyfriend, Scott saying, Willie Fins, you don't want that drama. Can you imagine me on Keeping Up with the Kardashians? I would talk about the Dolphins just nonstop each and every day on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. They'll be asking me whatever. I'll be like, did you see Tua's throw today? That Literally, that's how the show would be. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, if I think if you were to find yourself on – uh, keeping up with our Kardashians, one, not only would it be a madhouse, two, it would be about as entertaining as it can possibly be. I mean, let's let's get it going. If we're going to do yes. it right, we need to start dancing. We need to be coming in. We need to bring that energy, something that the Kardashians— Well, Kardash- it's funny. So I, I'm a fan. Don't make fun of me. My subscribers, please don't make fun of me. But make fun I, of I, I'm a fan of the show The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Roast this man. And I've had a lot of people tell me, Will, you should go on the show. And literally, like, I'm getting to an age where, like, I can go on the show and probably get selected, perhaps. So if you want me to go on The Bachelorette or The Bachelor, or, well, no, The Bachelorette, let's make that very (laughs) clear. I would go on The Bachelorette. I'll go on The Bachelorette. Uh, Uh, All right, moving on. Better team, because producer Trace is a big Saints fan. He's repping the Saints on today's show. Black and gold, baby. Is it the Dolphins or is it the Saints? Hey, Hey, remember that game where we ended your playoff chances? Last year, yeah, remember that Monday yeah. Night Football? Do you remember that game? I uh, remember that game. Man, I would, I would talk a lot of mess too if I had Ian Book. If I was playing against Ian Book, you know, dang, a rookie quarterback with no players, Sean Payton. Out. I mean, oh, dang. I mean, yeah, big win right there for sure. Type M I A for Dolphins if you think the Dolphins are the better team, or type N O for the Saints. Go down in the comment section, chime in. Also, what's your favorite food? We got football season fast approaching. What's your go-to football food? Pizza, burgers, hot dogs. Go down. Let me know. What if are you, you rolling with? If you don't say wings, you're wrong. Yep. Wings win. Wings is the right answer. 100%. There's multiple right answers, but wings is one of them. No, there, there is certainly nothing better than wings on a football Sunday. I mean, I love going to Buffalo Wild Wings or someplace, uh, having a beer, watching some football. Nothing is better than that. We'll give some shout-outs. We got Caden Smith. You like Caden Smith. He's saying hot wings. We got Cly Miami saying pizza and soda. Diego saying Panda Express. I like Panda too, Diego. That's underrated. Garth saying chicken wings. We got Ninja saying wings or pizza. Ed saying tacos. Ooh, that's a good one. We didn't mention that. Bill Lyon saying buffalo wings. Bill Lyon up there in Syracuse, New York. I might have to meet you in Buffalo for a game day and go to Anchor Bar with you. Hey, real quick. I love Anchor Bar. Mario, I see you in the chat saying that I watch football at Buffalo Wild Wings. Let me tell you right now where you're going to be watching football. It's going to be on Dolphins today. We're going to be going yes, live, sir. having fun. You're going to be watching Dolphins games with Dolphins today, baby. So, reminder, on Saturday night, we're going to be live at 7.15 Eastern Time, 15 minutes before kickoff for that game. We're going to be having a live watch party. I'm going to do some play-by-play. I'm going to be kicking back, drinking a few beers. It's going to be a lot of fun. You want to join us. We'll be live for the Dolphins-Buccaneers game. Begins at 7.15 Eastern time. We'll do a little 15-minute preview, then kick off at 7.30. And let's preview that Dolphins versus Buccaneers game. I am Will Scott. Welcome into Dolphins Day. Football is back. First preseason game Fast approaching as the Dolphins are in Tampa Bay, getting ready to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, one of the best teams in the National Football League. A lot of exciting storylines emerging from those joint practices. So we're going to give you what to watch for here in that game. Let's get into our first storyline. That is maybe the starters not playing. And that's not a surprise because it is the preseason. We normally see... Starters kind of sit out the preseason. We heard today from camp that Tua Tungavailoa might not play. Here is what Cameron Wolf said of NFL Network. Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel indicates he's leaning toward Tua Tungavailoa not playing in preseason opener Saturday versus the Bucks after liking what he's seen over the last couple practices. No final decision yet, though McDaniel also indicated he expects Tua to play in the preseason. Now, do you want Tua to play? Type P for play or type B for bench. I think a lot of us want him to play. 
but there's also a lot of us that you know want him to not get hurt and just sit on the bench and get healthy, stay healthy for the regular season. Go down, let me know. Do you want Tua to play on Saturday night? Skyler Thompson will definitely play. We know this, and he is my number two storyline in terms of what to watch for because he has looked great throughout the entire offseason program, OTAs, minicamp, and training camp. And when you're looking at this QB depth chart, if Tua cannot go, Teddy will be the second or will be the first quarterback in the game. Skylar Thompson will probably play the entire second half. And I'm really excited to watch Sky, who was a seventh round pick by the Dolphins in the last draft. He's looked great in training camp. He lit it up on Thursday in the joint practice with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So there's a lot of people really high on this guy going in to the Dolphins' first preseason game. A lot of people also high on Eric Ezukanma, the fourth-round pick out of Texas Tech, has looked fantastic throughout the training camp sessions that we have been seeing. He has really looked like probably the third most impressive wide receiver, only behind Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell. This is what wide receivers coach Wes Welker said. We knew he was going to be kind of a project, really raw, really green at this point, but you really start to see him come on. He's starting to pick up the offense and what it's like to be a pro and all those different things. He's done everything we've asked and then some. We're very happy with Eric and the progress he's making early in camp here. Easy e is going to go off on Saturday night. He is going to have a ridiculous game, maybe even multiple touchdowns. Like I really believe that his coming out party is going to be on Saturday night in the Dolphins' first preseason game. Will Eric Ezukanma catch a touchdown pass on Saturday? Type Y for yes or type N for no down in the comment section. Go down, chime in. Type Y for yes or type N for no. I'm typing Y for yes when it comes to getting this T-shirt combo. You can do it at chatsports.com slash Dolphins combo. Both of these T-shirts on sale right now. Don't know how long they're going to be on sale, so we brought them back for you this week because preseason football is back. Chatsports.com slash Dolphins Combo. Go down and buy that T-shirt combo. That link is going to be in the comments and the description of this video. Dolphins running backs, another thing to look out for because this is a loaded running back room. Who is going to stand out in the preseason? Who's going to emerge as the RB1 on this team? Because... Any one of those first three guys could emerge as the first string running back on this team. Chase Edmonds, Sony Michelle, Raheem Mostert, all new to this Dolphins team. All of them expected to play on Saturday night. I'm excited to see what these guys can do. You have a, a lot of versatility when talking about all three of those backs. And we will be live for the Bucks game. Watch party starts at 7.15 p.m. Eastern time Saturday night. Be sure to subscribe to our Dolphins channel, turn on your notifications because when we go live, you'll get a notification. It's going to be the best place to watch that game on Saturday. You're invited for our Dolphins watch party. We're going to be we're going to be having watch parties for every single Miami Dolphins game this year. No Igbenogany is something else to watch for because he's been bad. <laughs> he's been really bad in the training camp. Sessions, he was bad in the joint practices, so he's got to step up, and he has to show some improvement, or he could be in trouble. And I don't really see him getting cut because there's nearly a $5 million dead cap hit if you cut him. So I don't really see that happening. But when you look at Trill and you look at Cater Cohoon, some of those younger guys that have just looked so much better, he might get cut if he doesn't play well. So the preseason is very important for the former first-round pick, Noah Igbenogany. It's also important for Kyle Trask, and I'm actually pretty excited to watch this guy. I know some of our subscribers here on Dolphins today are also uh, Florida Gator fans, or maybe not so much if you're a Miami Hurricane fan, but obviously a lot of Gator fans in the Sunshine State. He's expected to play a lot on Saturday versus Miami. Tom Brady's not going to play as a third-string quarterback, so we're going to be able to see Kyle Trask and Skylar Thompson go at it. And when you talk about Trask, you're talking about a former Heisman finalist. This is what he did his senior season at Florida, 43 touchdowns, eight interceptions. You have a 68.9% completion percentage, over 4,200 yards. He was stellar at Florida. And a lot of people think this guy can be the heir apparent to Tom Brady if he plays well. Who's going to have the better game? Is it going to be Skylar Thompson, type ST, or is it going to be Kyle Trask, type KT, 
down in the comment section. Go down, chime in. Next thing to watch for is the offensive line. We are going to learn a lot about the offensive line in this first preseason game, how good, how legit this offensive line is because there's a lot of players that do not have experience at their current positions, three to be exact, Austin Jackson, one of those guys, but he's looked good at practice. The last two days looked very good in those joint practices. His 23rd birthday was Thursday, so happy birthday to Austin Jackson. We're rooting for you, AJ. We certainly hope that you start to show some improvement. He has looked much, much better throughout training camp. Go down in the comments section, wish Austin Jackson a happy birthday, type HBD down in the comments, HBD to celebrate Austin Jackson's 23rd birthday. Travis Wingfield said this about AJ. Austin Jackson says his confidence is at an all-time high and credits the coaching staff. Says that he's always had a good work ethic, but he's learned this year how to be more deliberate with his work. And like I said earlier, we're going to learn a lot about this offensive line. You have Eichenberg at left guard. You have Connor Williams at center. You have Austin Jackson at right tackle. So we're going to learn a lot about this offensive line this preseason, how good this offensive line can be. And I hope that we see the starters play a lot tonight. Here is that depth chart. You have Armstead as the left tackle. Eichenberg is the left guard. Williams at center. Robert Hunt at right guard. And then at right tackle is Austin Jackson protecting Tua's blind side. And even though Tua might not play, we still want him to be protected throughout the season. So we're going to see if Austin Jackson can be that guy. Connor Williams is snapping issues. We've seen those snapping issues be pretty freaking bad in training camp. It's going to be fascinating to see if it's also a problem throughout the preseason games. Let's break down again what to watch for. So, we're going to see some starters not play tonight. That's just a given. It's the preseason. I would like Tua, though, to get some reps. Skylar Thompson's going to get a lot of reps. I think he's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Eric Ezukanma might catch a couple touchdown passes from Skylar Thompson tonight. And then the Dolphins running backs. I understand it's the preseason, but it's going to give these guys an opportunity who can separate themselves and become RB1 on this football team because you have a couple guys vying for that spot. Noah Benogany has to step up. He cannot be torched tonight like he was in the two joint practices. He cannot be letting undrafted free agent wide receivers get the better of him. He has to look better. I want to see him play a lot tonight. And Kyle Trask, Skylar Thompson against Kyle Trask is going to be a lot of fun to watch. I'm excited to watch Trask tonight. I'm also interested to see how this offensive line can do against a pretty good Tampa Bay defense. And I understand that You know, the first string defense might not even play that much, but still, I want to see how this offensive line does. Uh, The second string offensive line, by the way, the joint practice was dominated by the second string Tampa Bay defensive line. Now, go down in the comments section and predict the score for the Dolphins' first preseason game. I'm curious to hear what you think. If you guess the score correctly, we'll give you a shout out on a future show. With that, we will bring producer Trace back on. Before we let you go, we want to give a couple more shout-outs here on the show as we are wrapping up our very first Dolphins live show. And we're going to be live every single Thursday, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern time throughout the entire season. It's going to be a lot of fun. The Dolphins are going to be a fun team to watch this season. Yeah, I think that there's no reason why you shouldn't subscribe, turn on notifications to all, share with your friends and family, send it to Cousin Terry, give it to your aunt and uncle. I don't care. Give it to anybody and everybody because this is the channel that you need to be at for game day. No channel is going to have as good of coverage. No channel is going to have as much and as in-depth of coverage. And, and like, you know, the volume that we're going to have. We're going to have them every day after the game. We're going to have pre-game stuff. We're going to have post-game stuff. I mean, it's going to be, you know, just off the chain. I don't think that there's another channel that's going to do what we're going to do. As we give some shout-outs here before we head out, Joe P. is saying Dolphins going to win 35-17. to D. Hat saying 14-10. to uh, Bucks win. Surprising. I don't know if we got a Bucks fan in the chat. We have oh, yeah. Paul 5486 saying Fins. Oh. John Ruiz saying 35-34 Dolphins. I mean, to be fair, like, just plain devil's advocate, y'all did beat the Saints, whatever, last year. But, like, can we just take it? A, take a quick second, just get an FTB going because FTB. FTB Tom, Tom Brady is a fraud. Tampa Bay FTB. sucks. They can't even beat the Saints, which is ridiculous. Um, yeah, FTB's in the chat. Let's go ahead and spam that. 
Also, uh, Matthew Peterson with a shout-out to legendary Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim. We appreciate Matthew Peterson showing some love to my college basketball coach, Jim Beheim. <laughs> Matthew Peterson in the chat. Shout-out, Petey. He hosts the Browns Report here at Chats Force, and he's criticizing Jim Beheim while his quarterback is Deshaun Watts. So, there we go, Petey. John Ruiz saying FTB. We got Paul 5486 saying FTB. Poke Greenwich, FTB. Matthew Peterson saying uh, go Orange. William Bonnie saying FTB. Go Dolphin says Cameron Reed. John Ruiz, FTB. Down in the chat. Ninja Alex saying FTB. Tom Brady was nowhere to be found. Where's Tom Brady? Hashtag, where is Tom Brady? He's scared of the Dolphins. He did not want to go up against the Dolphins' defense today. He did not want to go up against the Dolphins' defense on Saturday night. He is scared of the Dolphins. That is my take. Well, there's this crazy saying, and it's an old-fashioned saying, and they say, if you can't beat them, join them. And if you can't join them... Then retire. You know, it's whatever. Yep. It's a tale as old as time. So, you know, yeah, Tom Brady sucks. He, he's, he's a fraud. I, I, I tend to agree because when you look at what went down with the Dolphins' penalties, how on earth do the Dolphins get that big of a penalty and Tom Brady gets to walk scot-free? How does Tom Brady – and you know it was Tom Brady's idea. I mean, his best buddy is Vice Chairman Bruce Beal. He probably went to Bruce and was like, hey, uh, I have this genius plan. I'm going to fake retire, and then I'm going to come be a part owner with you, and then when the preseason rolls around, I'm just going to come out of retirement and play for the Dolphins. Are you telling me the Dolphins approached Tom Brady with that idea? Do you really think – that was Stephen Ross's idea. And I'm not trying to defend Stephen Ross. He was wrong. But that was Tom Brady's idea, and he gets no penalty. Inconceivable because Tom Brady definitely sled those meetings. I mean, you can't tell me that he has the LeBron James effect on the NFL where he could do anything and anything, and no matter what it is, it's perfect if he does it. It doesn't matter if he break. He could. I think Tom Brady could literally get away with some very, very bad crimes, and nothing would happen because it's Tom Brady. And let's. I mean, you can't argue it because it's true. It's a fact. When you look at the Dolphins' preseason opener, a lot of storylines, one of them being, is Tua going to play? Is he not going to play? We'll find out. We'll be live for the Dolphins against Buccaneers game Saturday night, 7.15 p.m. Eastern time. Do not miss it. Subscribe. Turn on your notifications. And again, we're going to be live every single Dolphins game this year, live every single Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern time. If you're a Dolphins fan, this is the place to spend football season. Here on Dolphins Today, go Fence.